What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Outside of the Clutch. Tonight's hopefully not going to get too, too serious, but it's a serious topic that we have to talk about. Um, as most people know, there's a lot of legislation going on in our country right now against our hobby or industry or however you want to put it. So tonight we have a lot of very uh, informative and smart guests that can explain everything that's going on for us. Uh, Mr. Phil Goss, the president of US Arc and the better half left ryan but uh ryan mcveigh and erica mcveigh of viv tech products yeah we uh erica and me may randomly dip in and out we have a four month old puppy and i don't know what he was doing but it sounded like there was a turkey in our back room he was attacking the... <laughs> awesome yeah so oh man so Phil, do you want to do you want to kind of explain what we're facing as an industry right now? I think you're you're probably the best voice to explain it, so I don't dumb it down or like mess it up really bad. That's, well, I, I hope I'm the best voice. Otherwise, we need to replace me. We're in trouble if you're not. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's send in your resumes. Uh, so, what's going on currently? The topic most people are talking about are the Lacey Act amendments, which passed the House of Representatives, Congress. This is federal level stuff on February 4th, I believe it was. And these Lacey Act amendments would have three major changes. The first one they would do for reptile people who have been around for a minute, uh, they would reverse U.S. Arc's lawsuit victory that we won back in 2017. And what that would do is it would make it illegal to ship species listed as injurious under the Lacey Act across state lines. That's the first thing it would do. The second thing it would do, it would force the United States Fish and Wildlife Service to create a white list. And a lot of people don't even know what a white list is, but it's basically an OK list. We're usually familiar with black list or ban list. And a white list would tell us what we could import into the country. If it's not on that list, you cannot import it into the country. And the third thing, it gives FWS a new emergency designation, which would mean they don't need really any validation at all. They could list a species as injurious the same day it posted in the federal register. And then they have up to three years to decide if they want to keep it on the injurious list or not. So three really big changes of the Lacey Act that everybody should really be aware of if you're not already. Yeah, that's That has huge implications in all aspects of our industry, whether you're like, I, I don't think a lot of people think about it, but most people do like zoos and things growing up right like and just the effects like not just our industry but the effects it would have on zoos the effects that it would have on all the educational programs within the country that essentially create this hobby or this industry or i'm going to keep saying both of them because people can't make up their mind what they want it to be <laughs> but Essentially, that's what's created all of this. You create that love of animals as a child and then pulling away from that is the best way. So PETA and those other uh, great animal rights organizations decided to attack the right way this time, unfortunately, I believe. Um, what can can we explain a little bit how how something like this comes into legislation or how it could become a bill to be passed well the, this one was super sneaky i mean this was dirty politics at its finest so hr 4521 which is the bill number again this is a federal level bill it actually was introduced last summer it had a different name usica was what it stood for a u.s innovation and competition act i believe is what it stood for and then it just sat for months never had a hearing and that was actually so it was two thousand pages of what they call bipartisan bills. So they had both Republican and Democratic support. But again, USICA just sat for months and months and months. And then out of nowhere, it popped up again on January 28th. And it had all this stuff that never went through committee, uh, was never vetted, was never voted on. And it was just extra stuff that was added onto it that made it almost 3,000 pages long. And that's where these Lacey Act amendments were found. So it's section 71102 of this nearly 3,000 page bill and we're calling it a bill, but it's basically like a book. Uh, it's made up of a whole bunch of smaller bills. So it's like chapters in a book. So there's sections and other bills that compromise the America Competes Act. And again, this this was not voted on. It didn't go through the committee process like it should. And then it just was introduced and it passed the House what, four or five days after it was introduced. That's insane. 
Yeah, not the way it's supposed to work. Um, so, so the way the way it's supposed to work quickly on that, usually a bill gets introduced. It has a hearing. Uh, we'll just say it was introduced in the House and not the Senate. So introduced in the House, it will have a hearing, which whichever committee is supposed to hear that. So this bill should have been heard by the House Natural Resources, these Lacey Act amendments. They never went to the House Natural Resources Committee. Again, they were just tacked onto the bill and then it went to a, a floor vote just a few days later and then passed. So, again, it didn't go through the process that it should have. So how do we how do we best fight this? Because uh, so I know both of you have been on quite a few podcasts over the last month and a half, obviously, with what's going on um, with the Senate getting ready to reconvene. It's time for our second push, which is why you're on tonight. But um, what's what's the best way for the typical keeper or just the typical person to kind of make a difference for us at this point? Yeah, so super easy. Uh, go to usarc.org and it's it's we've got it as a sticky alert. So it's a very top alert. Just go there and then scroll down. And we've got simple instructions to contact both your senators. And now we're actually asking you to start contacting your representatives too. Um, so again, it's all spelled out. There's just a link that you click to find your senators, one for your representative. And then we've got sample messaging and everything right there that makes it super easy to do. And we're asking for, I know emails are the simplest thing to do, but they're kind of at the bottom of the list on effectiveness. It's way more important to do phone calls and actually, believe it or not, mailed letters and fax letters actually usually carry a little bit more weight than emails. And if you're comfortable enough, uh, try and set a meeting. Uh, a lot of people in Congress, congressmen and women are doing Zoom, so you don't have to be in D.C. to talk to them. And also throughout the year, they also come back to their home states for a week or two at a time. And you can set meetings in, too. Uh, but Senate just came back from one of those uh, recesses. So, again, if you're if you're comfortable with it, uh, try and set up a meeting. Okay. Yeah. And if you do send an email, make sure to make your title very, very clear and not like make it, you know, oppose the Lacey Act amendments in the competes bill. Mm -hmm. Something of like, you know, that long that lines like they'll. Otherwise, they just kind of get shoved into a giant folder and clicked red. Wait, you're not you're not supposed to just copy and paste. I, I thought that was that was the way we were supposed oh, yeah. to do it. That's oh, yeah. what we were told to do. Yes, yeah, so no. Ryan brings up a good point. So what he's saying is, all your emails are not going to be read. I mean, they're getting thousands, sometimes tens of thousands of emails. So it's the subject line. Make sure that you use a very clear subject line that says no to HR forty five twenty one or. No to the Lacey Act amendments found in HR 4521 or something along those lines. Um, just because, again, as Ryan said, they're probably just going to tally whether it's supportive or opposed to and not actually read your email. So how do we, from all the ones I've gotten back, unfortunately, I've gotten a lot of blanket emails back. I think they're probably tired of seeing my four different emails reach out to them daily and leaving messages. But um, it, it's a constant blanket email right back and actually uh good old ted cruz i hate this guy um for for as vocal as he is on everything he has not <laughs> responded yet it's uh john i forget his last name john something it starts with a c i can't say it right um but i get a i get a blanket response from him every day now from his office and i'm just waiting for his assistant to be like uh we're gonna block you from now on yeah, yeah. Typically, 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 you'll just get a canned email back, and it depends on the way their systems are set up. A lot of them, you'll have to select like whether you want to talk about the environment or agriculture, right. and then a lot of people freak out because they get this thing saying that people support animal welfare and the Lacey Act or whatever, but they're not actually reading the specific email that you sent. Again, that's just because of the topic you chose on their website. Now we're actually starting to see those. Some of them are actually addressing these Lacey Act amendments specifically. And I know some of them are coming back saying that they support it, but actually most of them that have been forwarded to us are saying they're actually opposed to those Lacey Act amendments. So that's good. So even though, again, they've drafted an email specific to these Lacey Act amendments and you're just, they may be sending that out to a thousand people or however many contact them each day. At least this has made enough noise that they wrote a canned response specifically for these Lacey Act amendments. So that's a good sign. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's another thing too, is that uh, just, and Phil said this before on, on other podcasts, and, and I'll just repeat it, but um, realize that, that we need to make a lot of noise. And even if, even if, like 
hopefully what we what what we want to see happen is that that gets pulled out of the of the competes act um but it's not just that we also want them to uh be nervous to do to bring it back in the next couple of years so uh, generally when you are a small tiny entity like us arc and you sue the government over their ability to uh stop interstate transport and then you find you you, you win your lawsuit and they lose that ability they don't like it so they're not just going to sit there and go oh you won but we can make it where uh we can make enough noise that it they they don't want to keep rustling feathers and it goes away for a while or at least they have to come back with another strategy and we can start that and be polite if you're going to meet with them if you're going to send a letter please be polite and don't call them all the names or anything like that a lot of them do have i'm so sorry about my dogs have um offensive word filters through Microsoft that you can Your dog call. has some offensive words to say about <laughs> <laughs> yes. He has very strong feelings on this uh, Lacey Act right now, so. He's upset. He is, oh, and he's coming. Whatever, he can just hang out. Oh, that's a Frenchie. That's, that's the issue right there. Just, Ryan, don't you actually vocal. have a story about going in in Wisconsin and having to deal with uh, someone who had heard from the less professional reptile people? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, there was a, a, a bill that was coming in through Wisconsin and uh, it was going to ban crocodilians. Um, so I ended up going to the, um, to the state Capitol and walking around for an entire day, handing out packets and, and information to all of the different people that were involved as well as other mm -hmm. representatives. Um, and then when they had a, they had a publicly aired committee hearing and I showed up to, um to to be able to speak and actually got to talk to them about it and it ended up that the one of the the sponsor of the bill or of the yeah the bill um was on a local zoo's board and loved crocodiles actually one of his friends had an alligator that he thought was the coolest thing ever so when i read i explained back to this committee what this was going to do and how it could be used he actually ended up uh coming out and talking to me afterwards i was talking to some press in the hall and and inviting me back to his office to really discuss all of this he was a super super cool guy he'd had it set up to him that like hey this is going to stop psychos from putting a baboon in their bathroom in their apartment which happened in madison so there was something along that line so that kind of had a precedent and that's a scary thing that is a reasonable thing for people to be afraid of and then i told him well yeah i understand that but if you go through these pieces it can be used like this and then as soon as he realized that that's kind of more where this was going and how it was going to be used, he took out crocodilians from the bill, put all of the things that the, the, the uh, HSUS and their representatives, everything they wanted, like removing the ZAA, he put it back in. And then he banned them from his office for meeting for the rest of the time that that bill was there. He didn't even want to talk to him. So, and then it died. And that was all just because he showed up to say something and was polite and spoke to him and, Understood too that he didn't wake up one day and go, you know what, just to hell with those reptile people and taking everything. Like they don't do that. Somebody came to him and said, hey, this happened. You know, uh, the the animal control officers lo lo locally. Somebody said that happened, and animal rights uses those as great opportunities to go in and say, look, we can stop that from happening. That shouldn't happen. And if you care about animals and you care about people, you also don't think people should keep a tiger in their garage, like that's a kind of a thing. It's not hard to, to, to defend that or to, you know, have that point. So they go in thinking that not seeing the other pieces of what this can do and how it can hurt other people and innocent people. I think one of the hardest things that we're facing right now is so we're super focused as the reptile industry on just the reptiles, but we understand the implications that it's going to have on like, the aviary on the fish on all these other species that they're just they're trying to wipe out pets as a whole and i think the hardest part that we have to figure out and i'm not saying that people don't try i'm just saying i don't think we're very effective at bringing all the communities together and that uh honestly it's something i've been pondering over if if you had 
how do I want to put this? <laughs> hey, you remember those long, awkward pauses I talked about, Phil? <laughs> um, if if you had a way that you would want to convey this message and find a way to bring all three groups, well, essentially more than three groups, but the main three groups together, what what do you think would be the most uh, helpful way to do it or the most the easiest way to actually make them care? Yeah, this one, unfortunately, these Lacey Act amendments are doing that. So we're actually seeing a lot of other groups getting involved. And unfortunately, reptile people understand this because we had to live through it. <laughs> We've already seen over 200 species of reptiles and amphibians listed as injurious. A lot of those that were common in trade and commonly kept as pets. So we've already lived through it. Uh, but now we're seeing fish people and bird people and mammal people. Obviously not all of them, because especially the general pet keepers and small breeders didn't have to live through it like reptile people did. But a lot of them are waking up and you're seeing groups like the National Aquaculture Association and American Federation of, on Aviculture, uh, PJAC. All those groups are putting out alerts and it's bringing everybody together. So obviously when you have more than U.S. SARC, because obviously we're known for reptile and amphibian efforts, but, you know, the bird, bird, mammal and fish people are waking up because uh, the other groups are are catching on. And after U.S. SARC alerts, I think the National Aquaculture Association was the first big organization uh, that kind of put out an alert. And then, like I said, other people just started chiming in and realizing what was going on. So just to reiterate, who... Out of all of the people and organizations out there, found this and then brought it to the attention of everyone. Yeah, you U.S. Arc found it and released it. So again, this was yeah. when we. Now the bill's actually three thousand six hundred ten pages. When we found it, it was two thousand nine hundred twelve pages. And usually, usually we get these through a. Um, I'll call it simple. I don't know exactly how it works, but keyword searches. Uh, through a system legislative system that we use but our federal lobbyists that we retain every year actually get, had a heads up on this said hey this america competes act came out we heard there were uh, animal rights they just said animal rights related measures in it so then we started digging deeper and then we found it so but yeah us us arc found it on january 28th same day it hit the floor so the reason i point that out is not just because one i appreciate what us arc does and the fact that they're the first ones to find it but that's also why you should be a member of US Arc. And look at, there's even a link below because I it keeps scrolling by, so I know that that's a thing. It's like I planned this or something. <laughs> right? Oh God. I'm just so, saying, like, when people ask why you want to be a member, there's a lot of reasons and things like that and things like the fact that we know about all this because of Phil and his team and their work and, you know, just the searches and the things that they do. That's why we knew this existed. Otherwise, we'd be finding out about it maybe now, maybe. And at that point, who knows how quick we could react or if we could at all. Exactly. And that's, I think that's one of the things we've argued about a little bit. Um, I know it's one of the things we've we've definitely had a few candid conversations, Ryan. Um, what membership does? Uh, everyone sees it as, oh, if I donate, but I don't have a membership, as long as I'm donating more than the $40 or... What is it for silver? I think it's two fifty or two hundred and fifty for silver, and then like five hundred or a thousand for gold, right? C note. Yep. Yeah. So everyone looks at that, and I, I mean, I essentially pay for a gold membership every year in donations, but I don't give a shit. I still have a membership on top of that. Like it is what it is. One, if you're an actual legitimate business it's all a fucking right off in the first place so why do you care what you're spending sorry i shouldn't have cursed there goes the professionalism out the freaking door but wait a second let it go let it go oh great uh, <laughs> but the second part is i don't i don't think people realize how and i know you've said it i've said it i'm sure phil said it a multitude of times when he's talking to groups the membership within an organization or the numbers within an organization shows how, I guess you could say legitimate an organization is, unfortunately. that That's the good boy system. That's how things work at that level. The more that they feel you can pressure them, the more you're of a threat you are to them based off of numbers, right? Mm -hmm. So go join USR. <laughs> it's not so, that yeah, hard. So that makes, that, that's, that's, 
this is there's two reasons it, it makes a difference. One, if Phil goes in and he goes to talk to our, our, one of the senators and who's who's on this bill and who's sponsoring it, and he gets a meeting with him, that's awesome. That's a great opportunity. He goes and he goes, sir, me and the I'm going to say a number. This isn't right, but it's not good. If you knew the number, it's sad, and we need to be way better than that. Let's say it's we'll say it's me and the 1,500 people that are involved in the United States Association of Reptile Keepers care about this. That's not even the amount of people in that that like he. That's a quarter of his flyers printed printed on in one week. Like that's that's nothing. They don't even they won't even blink at that. But if he comes in and says the quarter million people that are members of USR care about this, that makes a big difference. So that's one way in which the numbers and being a membership makes a difference um, is that it, it that's what you're saying, like leg legitimizing it. It gives more weight to what we do because we are, make a bigger voice. So if you think about it, the more people that are going, ah, and frustrated at the same time, we all can yell louder together if there's more of us. Same kind of a thing. The other part about it is like when the... Uh, large snakes were, t uh, when Phil awesomely won that lawsuit again. Yeah. All, all on um, my own. It was just me. Just, I just, oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, yeah, only Phil and no one else. No, but everybody that pitched in on that, that, that being led by us and things like that. So that lawsuit, um, when, when they were going through that part of it was they got a temper, was it a temporary injunction? Um, uh, that allowed shipping to happen across state lines again. And that was really awesome. However, the judge, not Phil or anyone involved, said that it was only for US ARC members. And you had to be able to prove you were a member before that judgment happened. So that meant that if you kept retics but weren't a member, you still couldn't legally ship them and could still be picked up for Lacey Act violations while that was still happening. So if something like that were to happen again, you're going to want to be one of the people who's a member because it might not be something like just shipping retics. It might be something like shipping period or moving across state lines period or any of the, any animals, especially with what's going on with this particular amendments to the Lacey Act. This could be everything never going anywhere. So you're going to want to be a member and be a big part of what that is. And that force going back, not just somebody that supports it. Mm -hmm. And I like how you said that because so here's one of the things I don't think a lot of people think about right now. There is a huge migration of people all over the United States right now. Huge migration like you, New Mexico, Texas, Florida, um, Utah, like all these states are having people come from California, from Washington, from Oregon, from New York, from these states where taxes are just getting outrageous, right? And because of that, you have reptile keepers that now want to move across state lines and you just lost your right to move your collection because you didn't fight for it. And we let the Lacey Act pass again. Um, you have effectively given up your hobby by choosing to move because you wanted to get away from taxes. And now you have to deal with more. Yeah, so there's a lot of bad stuff that can come from it. The way I look at it, it you can do five bucks a month as a membership and i look at it as my dues or kind of insurance i mean it's not like insurance but <laughs> it's what i can do to protect myself as best as i can because it's the only option i really have to do anything to stop this stuff so that's how people should kind of look at it not just as like a, oh we're just supporting phil with his i've seen it's his Mercedes Phil's Benz mansions Benz. and ferraris <laughs> And he only sleeps in the presidential suite at hotels, I'm telling you. I've right. never seen Phil sleep on someone's floor. Every, every comfort inn I stay at, I get the presidential suite. <laughs> <laughs> that one comes with a mini fridge. in the, yes. it, But it's in the dresser, and you have to find it. Ooh. Ooh. Fancy. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, oh, man. What's one of the things that you guys would like to to see more people do like, obviously we're making the push for membership tonight. That's, that's the main focus on this is to actually educate yourself on what's happening. Um, but also to push for membership, but what's one thing that you would like to see people do outside of just joining us arc to make a push? Yeah. I mean, outside of joining, just to our alerts. I mean, we, we make it as simple as we can. I mean, it's right there. 
Obviously, some of it's a little bit easier to do on a computer if you're not super phone savvy. But uh, again, we have links, we have sample messaging, we have talking points. Every, everything's right there. We just listed, it was about 13 pages. Well, it's probably longer than that now, but a, a huge frequently asked question on the Lacey Act amendments. So you can scroll through that and get answers on all that stuff. But again, just, just complete the alerts. It, it's so easy to do. Um, literally, you can do it in less than a, than a minute um, to on the federal one to contact your two senators and representative. I mean, again, a minute or two, if you're good with this stuff at the most, it's going to take you five minutes. I mean, and it doesn't cost you anything. Um, so just get on there, at least send the emails. And then, like we said, we would appreciate if you take the time and actually make a phone call and just, we even have, it's two or three sentences written there for you to say, <laughs> again, that's on the US ARC website telling you what to say, if you, if you don't know what to say, and then mail off a letter and, a lot of people don't have access to fax machines anymore, but if you do, uh, fax one out. So uh, again, if you did all that, it's going to take 10 minutes out of, out of your life. I mean, seriously. And anybody who has like questions and is unsure can message me and Erica as well too. Like I'm happy to help you guys out if you're unsure how to word something or we both are. I just got voluntold. You did. Um, one of the other things is one of the breeders on the West Coast, it was military something, um created a little like postcard almost that they would hand out at shows and it said use our alert and then on the back was a giant qr code that had information on you know scan here and then this goes right to a list of your representatives and all that it's absolutely fantastic if you make those and then hand them out at your local shows too like when people come and visit your booth because don't just assume that you know, I'm not going to do it because somebody's going to go talk to Phil at Tinley. I can guarantee you most of the people don't stop and talk to Phil at Tinley. And I'm sorry, Phil, but it's true. I've seen people. Who wants to talk, talk to me? There's most, no, 100%. Like, most people, like, people don't even stop like, and talk to him at Arlington. It's like they see mm -hmm. the Slender Man and they're scared of him. Exactly. Because they're like, oh. <laughs> sorry, Phil, I had to. Kind of go, you're much better looking than Slender Man and less deadly. So. There's that for you. I would hope. I, I would hope he's right? less deadly. Except in the yeah. courtroom. He better be deadly in the courtroom. Otherwise, <laughs> yeah. there we go. Uh, but I have an issue. for those postcards, something like that, and it doesn't have to be super expensive for you, even putting up a thing on your table that says, ask me about the Lacey Act. Because somebody might stop at John's table, but not my table to talk. And so I don't get a chance to tell them about it, but John will. Or somebody down the road, if there's a reptile rescue at a venue, people love to go and see those animals. Those are the people who should be talking to them and say, hey, listen, you won't be able to bring your pet, things like that. So having those open conversations with them at events will also give you that time to have one-on-one um, -on -one conversations because you never know whose cousin's uncle's boyfriend is actually a senator and they're going to be able to get that information to them. Yeah, and we even made that as simple as we could, too. So at the very top of our Lacey Act alert, it's got two links right there. One is like a more visually appealing alert uh, that Stuart Design did for us. It's got a QR code you can stand, stand, scan that takes you straight to the alert. The other is kind of a more informative sheet, but anybody can print those up. Um, you don't even have to do color if you don't want to, but you can print those up, have those on your table to show, send them with shipments, whatever you want to do with them. They're right there, ready for you to print up. I think that's that's one of the biggest things is like we just got to get the information out there. I mean, so the reptile hobby. Oh, go ahead, Ryan. I'm no, sorry. No, go ahead. The reptile hobby. And I'll say this because a lot of people don't think about it, but money talks. Right. The reptile hobby in the United States. I don't know if anyone's looked into this recently is I believe the last time I checked was five point three billion dollars within the United States alone. Now, granted, that's animals, that's bedding, that's enclosures, that's all of that, right? That's a but lot of feeders, too. A lot of feeders, yes. Thank God for feeders. Uh, <laughs> uh, feeders have made my company, unfortunately. Um, hoping to change that one day. But for right now, it's predominantly feeders. But $5.3 billion, that's a huge source of taxable income. And if it's one thing our, lo our lovely government loves to go after it's our funds, right? So show them this is something that you want to keep around. If you take away this industry, 
you are losing the potential to tax 5.3 billion freaking dollars. Yeah, that's so, a good chunk of change. Go, Ryan. Yeah. No, there's something else that I kind of want to point out. So one thing throughout this whole uh, thing and something that happens with US Arc and, and, and when these things happen is I get a lot of people that are like, look, you don't, this to, nicely. you don't have to freak out. They're not going to no, they're not going to kick down your door. And and people get this. Oh, OK, it's not that big, de- big of a deal. Everybody's just overreacting. It's not a big deal. Now, I want to point out, like, they're right. No one's going to kick down your door and take your pets. That's that that we're a long ways from anything like that happening unless you're doing something illegal. Um, but nobody no, if you're a law abiding citizen, no one's kicking down your door to take your pets. But um, that's not how this works. And that's why people need to pay attention and why we we focus on so many of these little bills like this. It's not that they just all make everything illegal. It's tiny little pinholes that slowly bleed us dry until we don't have options. Things like uh, in New York, there was going to be no more animals being able to be shipped through the mail. That's through FedEx, through anything um, and through any airports. And everybody said, well, that sucks for New York. Well, LaGuardia is in New York. And do you know how much, how many animals come from Europe? Captive bred animals that we get access to uh, come through LaGuardia and major airports like that. Like we would lose massive chunks of that. And we, you got to think about there's other little pieces that are going after. Um, and that's where this kind of stuff is happening. Like, yeah, this Lacey Act may go through. And again, no, nobody, the government's not wheeling down tanks down the street and kicking your door in and taking your snakes. It's not what's going to happen, but it's going to make it a lot harder for you to move if you get a new job and then maybe you can't take your animals with you or you there it's, there's, it's going to create genetic genetic bottlenecks in every state for species where not a lot of people are working with them or how about that new amazing species that gets in, discovered and they find out they're endangered the united states zoos and all of us are getting zero chances to help out with anything involving that and that's because the, all of, like so there's there's so many pieces of this that are all little, but we do need to keep that energy up. And at, you need to feel like that's an attack like that because you need to be able to fight back like that every time. And while it feels like it's a lot all the time, it's because there's a lot of money to be made in destroying our hobby. And that's until that changes, they're going to keep coming. But the cool, the good, it's, the good thing about it is we, we've been able to, we, and I say we, but the hobby and that and the people that act in on it and the US Arc members and PJAC and you know these groups they're tiny ants going against an elephant and winning. And and that's why you really have to kind of keep like supporting US Arc. It's pretty incredible to watch you know a, a group like like US Arc be able to fight the government and win, especially yeah. on something like that. So it's 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 really it's just important to be a part of it and pay attention and understand that like we all need to be this excited and driven all the time. We need to push it all the time. Now, granted, you can sleep. You don't have to be like Phil. You can sleep, but you should. He's sleeping right now. He just <laughs> blinks a little <laughs> bit longer. <laughs> but like, you gotta, you gotta just remember that every day that you walk in and you take care of your animals and you're cuddling your snake on the couch, that you don't want it to get to a point where when that animal finally passes or something happens of old age and you want to go get a new pet, you want to make sure you still have that option. And these little tiny things that pop up are what slowly takes that away. And they also build. So that's the other thing is that these build steam. Um, Phil was on a podcast with us on another round. And he had mentioned that this started off as, um, what was it? To help with the pandemic or prevent another pandemic from occurring. And that sounds in theory like a great idea. The problem is, is that when you're looking at something like that, especially with like mammal-based viruses, unfortunately, dogs and cats also tested positive for things like COVID. And so it's going to start spreading out, just not just from your reptiles or your amphibians that are behind you, but now your dogs and cats, when those are gone, are gonna be the next in line. So those are things to kind of consider. Yeah, absolutely. And hopefully, people understand it's not rep reptile people are not the target all animals are the target so where these animal rights groups are they're targeting everybody it doesn't matter what kind of animal you work with it doesn't matter if it's agriculture if you're breeding dogs uh, again absolutely doesn't matter even if you're producing fish uh, and aquaculture for even human consumption 
uh, they're everybody's a target again we just see it because we're reptile people so we see how reptile world's being affected but yeah they're they're after all of us so that's a that's a pretty well stated question um i don't know if you want to jump on that phil yeah, is, there's no so reason to so jump on it. just contact well, your contact your members of congress and let's okay. stop it this yeah if this, yeah, I mean, yeah, there there could be another lawsuit if this passed. But what what happens with these Lacey Act amendments is they're rewording Lacey Act to repeal the effect of our lawsuit victory. So we already won the lawsuit, and now they're rewording the Lacey Act so that they FWS has this authority plainly stated in black and white where they didn't before. So it, it, it couldn't be the same lawsuit. I mean, and honestly. It would be very hard to file a lawsuit if this passes. You couldn't file a lawsuit really until there were some type of damages. So again, then you got to start collecting data. You could challenge uh, the science used to list species, but again, that's all stuff down the line. This this would have an immediate impact. And even if there was a lawsuit, our last lawsuit took three and a half years in court. The next lawsuit may take five, six, seven years. So <laughs> over the course of seven years, while this law can be enforced, the industry dies. I mean, well, I'm not going to say it dies, but a lot of species could be affected. Yeah. Actually, saying the industry dies in seven years isn't probably that far off if we're not allowed to import and things like that. So yeah. it sounds dramatic, but it might not be that far off. Yeah. So and it's 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 a it's a waterfall or a domino effect too of you know the the, the not as many animals are being able to be moved. Well, then stores don't have as many animals to sell, which means they don't have as many reasons to sell as much equipment and then the manufacturers making the equipment aren't moving as much equipment so they stop selling stuff and slowly we stop having the things we need to even keep the animals that we can get a hold of so it's it's all affects it so we have to instead of i i appreciate the question and the thought of what to do if it comes i'd rather just keep screaming until it until we get to that last second and then at that point we'll regroup and figure it out and if that happens, y'all better be members because and start start finding ways to start funding some stuff because where it's going to be a big dollar fight and every single one of us is going to need to help or we're going to be, that's it. So I'd rather instead of worrying about any of that, let's just not get to that point. Let's just make so much noise that they're afraid to bring it up for a couple more years. Yeah, in, in 2022, no, a, a federal lawsuit, a, a million dollars is the bottom number. <laughs> it, it, it goes up from there. I mean, you're again, you you blow through a million dollars on a on a federal lawsuit like this just quickly, quickly, quickly. So it, it certainly would not be cheap to do to challenge this in court. That's, I think that's anything you do in life too. Like I know we're talking about money in court, but so we're talking about we're looking at it the wrong way and. Sherry and Scales, if this does pass, we are now in a reactive mode, which is somewhere you never want to be. Um, I can tell you from my time in the military, you would much rather be in a preemptive attack versus reacting to an attack. Um, you would much rather have everything planned out and have a way to go forward and have multiple avenues to attack if one doesn't work the first time and if you go into a reaction you just have to take what comes right at you and unfortunately uh nine times out of ten that's not going to work out in your favor yeah and so people know the importance of just even general pet owners contacting their legislators is because when us arc sets a meeting with a member of congress if we go in they haven't heard from their constituents they're going to glaze over and be like why are you in here talking to me i, I don't care but if they've heard from 10,000 of their constituents, they're going to they're going to have you're going to have their undivided attention. They're going to listen to you. They're going to say, you know, a lot of people have contacted contacted us on this, which we've already heard. You know, we've heard reptile people are contacting us about this. So when we've had the meetings that we've had so far, they want to listen to us because you're contacting them. That's why it's so important for you to do that. All right. So one of the things I hinted at before this podcast came on was um I had a challenge for anyone watching this podcast and this is going to be my challenge. Um, we have give or take 17 days, 17, 18 days left in this month for everyone that makes even a bronze membership. 
if you send me a screenshot of you renewing your membership, if you send me a screenshot of you signing up for your first US ARC membership, I will donate $10 for every screenshot that I get till the end of the month. And besides that, there's one other thing I want to do. And I think this is a great time to talk about one of our first sponsors on this podcast. So I'm going to go ahead and put this set up. Um, wait for this. having faith in me and letting this come to fruition so <laughs> i didn't hear anything we just got <laughs> you didn't hear any of that oh my lord no <laughs> i heard nothing phil did you hear anything uh all i can say is that logo that logo is sweet that logo's the dog was not talking okay. <laughs> All right, well, we'll do it again. Apparently, I have to uh, work on my branding skills, folks. It's all good. I did like the moment of silence, though, it and just nice. staring and nice. contemplating the tech, yeah. and you know, yeah, yeah. it's a great logo. <laughs> Thanks, great logo. I, I like it. I, I think it's I think, I think it's pretty good. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at my phone again so that I can't see your faces now that I've messed up because I'm gonna go like as red as my shirt now. Um, <laughs> are you ready for innovation? Tired of the same boring product that's been used for 30 years? Ready to give your reptiles and amphibians the UVB they really deserve? Look no farther than VivTech. Their 3-watt LED bulb provides the UV rays your animals have been missing. With three bulbs to choose from, you can provide the specific climate needed for your pets. The optimal husbandry needs, not only that they provide... Not only that, but they provide a dimmable feature and are the only bulb on the market with a two-year warranty. You heard that right, a two-year warranty. So what are you waiting for? Go to VivTechProducts.com today and use code FCLUTCH0322 for 10% off your order to pro provide your animals the best care it's ever had. I thank you guys. I messed that up. Love it. Love it. <laughs> Hey, it, it was better than the first time around. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for having faith in me. It means a lot. Awesome. Oh, Congrats, John. Yeah. All right. So with that being said, uh, guys, the, the thing we need to worry about is keeping our industry alive, innovating our industry. It's something that you guys hold to your core. Um, it's something you're always pushing for. Ryan and Erica, and also Phil, I don't think he realizes the impact that he really does have on changing this industry. Um, the people that have actually taken the time to speak to him do wonders, uh, or it does wonders for them because it makes them think about stuff they've never thought about before. They just came in and they thought, oh, I wanted an animal or I wanted to start a business, but they, they didn't understand everything that comes within having that business or just having that pet and all the stipulations that could come down on them. So thank you guys for everything that you do. It, it really does mean the world to all of us. Mm -hmm. um, my wife's blowing up my phone because she's like, oh, we lost you. 
I think the the slight delayed podcast on YouTube is wonderful. Uh, <laughs> so but. on the back of that, here's here's a little request from me. If you work in the reptile and amphibian industry, just be responsible. Really, that's all we ask. And anytime anybody asks me what US ARC is, I, that word always gets in there. I say we represent the freedoms of responsible reptile and amphibian owners and businesses. So again, don't don't let animals loose. Don't uh, it's hard don't to be say. an asshole. <laughs> Ryan's gonna say some it's words. It's too funny. late. I've already said bad words. But again, just is. just be responsible. Make sure you're selling healthy animals. Uh, make sure you're not breaking any any laws. Even though some places have laws that are just crazy to start with, but still you can't go breaking those because uh, when one person gets caught, it's a black eye for the entire industry. So again, please, 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 just be responsible and represent the industry well. And if you're going to do dumb crap, just don't put it on the internet. Send up the video to all of your friends. No, don't. Just not on the internet. Things cannot be on the internet. It's for real. There's a real world out there where you can keep stuff out there and not on Facebook and YouTube. But I got to I gotta get popular. How am I supposed to get popular if I can't do crazy stuff on the internet, Ryan? Uh, you can do crazy shock stuff. Value. I have no personality. I need that shock value. <laughs> I'll find you friends, okay? You can do all the crazy stuff you want, just not with a tree viper hanging from your ear. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, don't nope. do surgery in your kitchen and then record it and put it on the internet. You had a clipboard of things not to bring up. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't on it. <laughs> As uh, Ryan never followed the rules. Exist. How about that VivTech logo? That was a nice logo. <laughs> it's pretty cool logo. I like it. And by the way, for anybody that wants to support VivTech, VivTech donates a percentage of all sales to US Art and to wildlife conservation. Go conservation. Go conservation. Oh, yeah. So I, I know you're a very busy man, Phil. Uh, we'll start wrapping things up a little bit. I know the McVeighs are extremely busy as well. They, uh, we have very odd hours of work lately. <laughs> um, so what's, what's one last thing that you would like to leave everyone listening right now with? Like if, if they listen to one thing, this entire podcast, what's the most important thing for personally, because unfortunately I've reptile community is getting better. So that's great. But apathy just runs rampant and it's not i hate hearing that the reptile community is apathetic it is not the reptile community it's just people as a whole so please don't say that you know you hate the reptile community or whatever there's bad people everywhere it's not just the reptile community but when when us are post an alert please 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 just especially if it's a state alert and you're in that state do the alert and also please help sh help us share it uh, so I'm not even, I'm horrible at asking for money, but so those two things, uh, just, uh, I'll let Ryan and Erica ask for money for me, yeah, so much. Um, <laughs> but All the money. just do the alerts and then share them because especially since Facebook started charging for boost, it, it's impossible for us to get the reach we used to reach. We used to get before they started that boosting our organic reach was 10 million plus a week. I mean, it was, it was just crazy. And now we're doing good if we get a million a week. Um, because Facebook, I mean, kudos to Facebook. They're making money, figured out a way to make money that I haven't figured out yet. But, um, uh, again, there are reaches of what it used to be. So just share that stuff and, and more people see it, especially if you have any type of page, or even if you're in just a group, uh, just reshare those us arc alerts. So more people see them that that's so helpful. So I ran into something that I was going to post, but I didn't, I thought it was kind of cool. So it was one of those like this day back so many years on Facebook. So nine years ago, I actually made a post on March 12th, nine years ago, that only 127 of my 950 friends on Facebook, 80 to 80% of which were reptile people, were actually actually liked US Arc. So it came out to like 16% of the people that I was friends with. Now it's 2001 out of roughly 5,000. So it's 40%. So I'm pretty happy about that. 
that's a massive change in the amount of people that are actually following and paying attention. So that's a huge positive. And I think with a lot of the things like the podcast like this and the, the way that you've been able to, you reach out to people, John, everybody else out there reaches out and starts to talk about it. Thank you to all of the content creators that are starting to actually voice an opinion on this too, and not just talk about it behind the camera it makes a big difference. Um, but yeah, no, there's, there, we're, we're, we're doing better as a community and things are getting better and we're growing. And I think the best thing that everybody can do is just continue to stay involved, continue to pay attention, continue to have fun and enjoy it and be responsible and just do the best you can to enjoy the hobby and what you love about it. But just be aware and, and, and be, in, be informed and be active. So make those calls, send a letter. Um, I remember years ago, there was a, I don't know if you remember this, Phil, what what bill it was where we in Ma the Madison Harry Herb Society we printed out like five thousand uh, uh, petitions. petitions and then sat at every store within an hour and a half from Madison, every pet store, and talked to people. We sent Phil like a box of of petitions, you know, like and that kind of stuff makes a huge difference. We actually had. Uh, a time we were fighting uh, a local a county uh, law that was going to make everything illegal, um, everything that wasn't a dog or a cat. And uh, we got enough petitions that we went in at one at one time and they were going to just not talk about it and push it out a couple more weeks until they looked at the pile of <laughs> hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that had you know signed to get uh, uh, petitions against it. And one of the guys on the committee actually said, no, 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 we're not going to table this now. Look how many people care about this. And they're all here to listen. We need to give them our attention as public servants. And that was a really, really cool moment. But that's the kind of moment where like stuff like that makes a difference. So I know it sucks. I know writing letters is hard. And I know like typing things sucks and taking literally anything, any time away from scrolling YouTube and Facebook and TikTok. It's valuable time. But... <laughs> I'm just saying, if you invested it for a tiny moment in something else and then came back to watching guys getting kicked in the balls and kittens falling into pools or whatever you watch, I don't know what's funny. I don't know what kittens. I don't know. Shit. People send me stuff. Weird stuff. Um, but anyway. Why'd you point saying, at the camera when you said that? Like it was one of us. It, I definitely didn't do that. <laughs> but no, just this kind of stuff. No, it, Eric it's is frustrating not. Good job. And it's it's emotional and it's it's you get angry about it and it feels like it's overwhelming and it's all the time but really it's really not that hard it's really not that hard to just sit at your computer hit a couple links control c control v send it's pretty quick and easy if you have to um but the, even those other things even those phone calls even writing a letter like literally you can just take the email and print it out and fold it into an envelope it still makes a bigger impact because it's a physical thing that shows up and clouds up their space. Think about it, if those 10,000 emails that they got were physical letters every day. They would have nowhere to put them. They'd have to pay attention. So that makes a big difference. So Ryan talked too long, and I forgot the first point I was going to make. He didn't talk too long. He talked a perfect amount of time. Uh, but petitions, <laughs> online petitions are a waste of time. Please, please, please do not sign a change.org petition and think you accomplished absolutely anything you did not. So if there is an if there is a change.org petition and you want to sign it after you do the steps in the US ARC alert or NAA or PJAC or whichever alert you're doing, um, do that. And then if you want to go do the change.org thing, but unfortunately, those online petitions do not carry any weight with the legislators. Now, what Ryan was talking about, handwritten petition forms, um, those are great, especially for local level stuff. Those can make a huge difference, but the online petitions just, just simply do not work. And I mentioned doing the US ARC alert. If you see another group who has an alert against this stuff, do it too. It's absolutely fine because the messaging is going to be different in each group's alert. So absolutely fine to do the sample letters from various groups and, and send in uh, more than one email or letter to your legislators. And then when you share this stuff too, be aware that like it's not all reptile people that and, like we've kind of said a couple of times, but make this real clear. It's not just reptile people like hamsters could be on this. It yeah. could be anything that's at a pet store could be on this could stop crossing state lines. It could be anything. Um, so it really could affect almost anyone that has animals. And uh, if it's hard to get them to see it that way, 
all animals in zoos in every endangered species program dies in that zoo and can never be crossing state lines to go to other programs. Like, no, I don't know a lot of people that aren't, if you're not an animal rights person, you generally enjoy zoos. So that's something that you can let people know. Their zoos can, are slowly going to go away. All of the good that those do, all the good those organizations do goes away. Conservation organizations, all of them that work with actual animals, they don't get exempt from that stuff. John, we're not, Ryan and I are not good at wrapping things up, just so you know, but <laughs> well, uh, Miss Erica, so do you have to just, just to point out, this goes outside the reptile world. Uh, I mean, other, <laughs> other, other people need to be really worried. So a good example is the Quaker parrot or monk parakeet, whichever one you want to call it. That's actually already listed as invasive in, I believe, 10 states. I guarantee that that would be one of the first species that would be listed as injurious if this passes. So, I mean, that's a super common pet species that's outside the reptile world. There's also a study floating around. Uh, it doesn't have traction, but there's a study that's pushing to actually ban guppies because <laughs> there's science showing how guppies can be invasive in Florida. And I, I know, again, you, you can say that's far-fetching. That's never going to happen, but... You have to understand that injurious, most times for injurious listings, it's just because that species can be invasive and cause some type of problem anywhere in the U.S. So when reticulated pythons were listed, the science that they used to list reticulated pythons only said there's a possible, not a guaranteed, a possible climate match in the southern, southern four counties of Florida and the Brownsville area of Texas. That was it. And then that was a federal law. So therefore... A year or so, you could not ship reticulated pythons across state lines until we won our lawsuit. And you could say, hey, that's a big snake. That's why they listed them. It had nothing to do with the size of the animal. It was because it could live in a very small percentage of the U.S. and cause some type of, of impact. So that could be a, a way smaller snake. It could be a parrot who they claim builds nests and power lines and, and knocks out the electricity. Um, it could be something outside of being big and scary. Uh, 201 species of salamanders are listed. I mean, what? who's afraid of a salamander? Uh, but they were listed again because possibly they could carry the bee sow chytrid fungus, not because they definitely do, just because it's possible. And again, we're talking about little tiny one to three inch amphibians. I mean, <laughs> the smallest thing ever. So nothing to do with size, nothing to do with being big and scary. We never know what reason they could use to list these species as injurious. Well, it's like the ball pythons. Like uh, I didn't think about it, and I forget who I heard this from. But uh, so me being in college, I'm in an externship right now to finish my associates, and then I start my bachelor's, right? Um, so I got the joy of when I showed up to my externship, the boss has a ball python as a pet. The accountant has a beardy as a pet. The bookkeeper has rats that they bought too big of rats to feed the ball python. So they turned into pets. Um, so I went and I'm, I'm helping to set up bioactive and I'm helping them figure out how to properly care for these animals. Right. And <laughs> I was taking care of the ball python and the boss looked at me and one of the managers was in there and looked at me and was like, uh, so this is just a baby. How big does this actually get? Because I don't know. And I was like, well, it's going to get about four to five feet if you take care of it properly. And it's, it's going to live upwards of 20 plus years as long as you take care of it right, right? Uh, and the look on their face, I was not ready for, <laughs> but... Uh, the pure shock and i was like oh, that's not even a big snake but i forget who said it but someone had talked about it and it i instantly got pulled back to that uh video that i was watching because they said it and they're like we don't think about it like a four foot snake is a typical snake anywhere you go and then they just get bigger from there like a big snake's like a 12 foot 12 foot plus in most areas and even then, I don't really consider that big, but to each their own, right? Um, but it's just simple things like that we don't always think about. And I'm going to ramble. We could be a great filibuster team. I'm just saying we should do it. Call the Midwestern goodbye. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, doesn't have to be a big snake. The brown tree snake is listed as injurious. Brown tree snake, not a big snake, listed as injurious. Um, so, yeah. Nothing. And 
there were animal rights groups who actually pushed when the con what we call the constrictor rule so that listed the, the large species of snakes there were i have the petition animal uh, one of the big the biggest animal rights group in the u.s wanted to ban all pythons this was not all big pythons this was children's pythons this was green tree pythons this was ball pythons and all boas nothing to do with size not boa constrictors we're talking sand boas i mean <laughs> anybody familiar with sand boas a male sand boa doesn't even get large enough to eat an adult mouse i mean they're they're such tiny little snakes but again it was all boas and all pythons that this animal rights group was pushing to to get listed as injurious which meant you couldn't ship them across state lines at that time and ball pythons and red tail boas were on the chopping block with the big snakes when that when that listing went through. They got pulled back because of the the economic impact would have made it a lot harder for them to list them. So they dropped it so that they could push that stuff through a lot easier without nearly as much work. So, but they were on the chopping block, and had they had funds or the reason to put to, uh, enough momentum to push, that that could have happened too. So. Yeah, it's again, it's always important to just keep not just supporting USR, being a member and actively sharing things. Don't just support them. Support is thoughts and prayers. Do actions. Actively do things to help your situation. All right, I'm taking my turn. Yes, yes. yes ma'am. <laughs> it's all over here. Good call. Erica, you're you're always, three dogs you, at once. you always have priority. You just got to kick Ryan and tell me to shut up. <laughs> Sorry, I'm tired. No, but for anybody who isn't as verbose as Ryan and Phil and John about these things, if you have a little bit of an outlet, that would be my takeaway for you guys is to utilize some of the Ozark alerts and just print out that with the QR code and just have that at your table when you vend or put it up on your Facebook page things like that, just to start conversations one-on-one. -on -one. Um, these guys are extremely good at let's talk to everybody. Sometimes we need the people who just want to talk to one person at a time because a lot of people who are influential also don't want to talk to everybody at once. They want to talk to just, like they want to hear just one person's side at one time. And you taking that time and being easier to approach is going to make a huge world of difference to a lot of people. So being that person who just wants to have that small conversation, that actually probably makes you one of the big heroes too, instead of being always loud and verbose. We also need the other side that shows, hey, we also have the other side that wants to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with everybody. So. Yeah, oh, I'm yeah, done. Yeah. That was it. It's not a five yeah. minutes. Is that it? Is it? I thought we were pausing for effect. Well, no, she's quick and to the point. I like time. it. I like it. So I'm I'm gonna <laughs> before Ryan gets beat on camera because I would I would <laughs> hate to lose my sponsor first night. Uh, <laughs> she, she owns the majority. You're fine. I don't even need to be around. Nice. <laughs> oh. be, before we end up, I'm just gonna repeat. So um, my challenge to everyone is if you get. A membership this month through the end of the month send me a screenshot i will put ten dollars for every screenshot that comes to me towards us arc at the end of the month as well as anyone that uses my code to purchase anything from vivtech all of the money made until the september arlington through that code will be donated to us arc at arlington cool thank you john that's incredibly generous. Thank you. Yeah. So if you didn't catch that, it turns your $40 membership into a $50 donation to US ARC. So thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. You guys have a great night. Make sure you share this. Make sure you get the word out. This is many of our livelihoods. Um, I'm, I'm not even going to lie about it. While I could talk reptiles all day on this and still somewhat do something, a lot of people in this industry will lose everything if we allow laws like this to pass right now. Um, take care of each other. Y'all stay blessed. We're going to see you on the next episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. Thanks.